Well, I sure hope you're ready to talk about a slew of beauty products because I am way overdue on my monthly beauty favorites and I have so many things to talk about. If you've been following along on Instagram at all, which you should, I'll put my handle right here on the screen. Um, I've been sick on and off, my kids were sick, I've had sinus junk, just all of the above. So my past few videos I sound like really congested and stuffed up and this is the first time that I think I feel I sound a little bit more like myself so it's good to be back I've been waiting to film this video until I sound more like myself I do now let's jump into it I'm gonna start with a few hair products the first one is by Living Proof they did send this to me uh, no strings attached this isn't sponsored I just received this as a gift this is their perfect hair day triple detox shampoo it removes product pollution and hard water buildup if you're seeing any purple around the rim, that is because I used a um, purple deep conditioner after I used this, and apparently um, it stained a little bit. Uh, anyway, this, though, is not purple, and it is a charcoal deep cleaning shampoo. So if you go more than one day between washing your hair, or you just feel like a good cleansing shampoo would be good for your hair, you would use something like this for those reasons. So not necessarily an everyday shampoo, but like a once a week detox kind of thing would be perfect. Maybe a Sunday shampoo. Um, I, I usually go at least, at least a day, sometimes longer if I can, between washing. And the other day I went three days and I was like, I have got to use this. So it came just in time. And I found my hair to be so clean, but yet still soft. You know, if you've ever used a shampoo and you feel like, oh my gosh, I took all the moisture out of my hair with the shampoo and you just want to load conditioner on it, this didn't make me feel like that. It still felt like it was good for my hair, but it just cleaned off all the junk that was sitting on the surface. Two other products that I've mentioned on the blog before and on Insta Stories that I want to tell you here are by Alterna. They also sent these to me as a gift. Not sponsored. I didn't have to say anything. Um, I'm only telling you because they're great. Um, this is the anti-aging line, the Restructuring Bond Repair Sealing Serum, and then the Restructuring Bond Repair Leave-In Overnight Serum. So let's talk about the leave-in serum first, the overnight one. When I saw this, I was like, oh man, this is going to be one of those products that you feel like loads your hair up with greasy, oily stickiness and you have to wash the next morning. Not the case. You can wash. I think in the directions it tells you, yep, leave on overnight and shampoo out in the morning. For best results, use two to three times per week. I put this on every night and sometimes if I'm not going to wash my hair the next day, I just won't. I just skip it but it doesn't make my hair greasy or look like it has anything on it. It's kind of amazing. However, I feel like it's really repairing some parts of my hair, mostly like the top layer of my hair. Um, I don't know what's going on, but it's so dry. I'm just blaming pregnancy and postpartum and all that stuff. Um, this makes my hair feel great in those damaged areas. So I will put a bunch of it on at night and I either will shampoo out the next morning or I'll just let it ride until the next time I shampoo. So I go to the gym most mornings, or I try to, um, so I'm pulling my hair up in a ponytail anyway, but even honestly, if I were to wear it down, you wouldn't be able to tell. So if you're looking for something to repair some damaged parts of your hair, this is great just to slide it on at night, right on top of dry hair. I should have said that at the beginning. You can put it on wet or dry hair, but I've only put it on dry hair because my hair is always dry at the end of the day. The other product is the uh, Sealing Serum. This is a 3-in-1 Sealing Serum. It rebonds pr and protects damaged hair. You can use this wet or dry. I use it in both manners, both wet and dry. This is something you'd put on like before you blow dry or if you air dry before you air dry, but just before you style. Like after you wash and condition your hair, this is going to be what you put on it. Um, just to kind of seal those ends. If you have any damaged areas or split ends, this is going to keep it from splitting higher or just looking worse. It's going to condition it and soften it. I really am seeing actual differences in my hair since I've started using both of these products. Um, I'm using other deep conditioners as well, so these aren't the exclusive products I'm using, but especially this overnight one. Um, they are great for damaged, distressed hair which is how I would describe my hair right now. I want to tell you about two foundations I've tried. Recently, one is NARS Sheer Glow and the other is the Hourglass Vanish Seamless Finish Liquid Foundation. Let's talk about the Hourglass first. This is a full coverage liquid foundation. They sent this to me as a gift as well. Sorry, I'm not meaning for this to be like all of these gifted products, but it's the nature of what I do and I obviously try them and so I tell you if they're good. 
Um, this is a great full coverage foundation. I was sent three different shades in an attempt to match my skin tone and it doesn't match perfectly. I could have requested different shades but honestly this one is so close. This is Shell. It is so close. I don't think they could get closer. I just am a little bit too pale, but hopefully in like a month or so, I'll have a little bit of um, warmth to my skin from being outside in nature again since winter will be over. Uh, so this will be the right color. But this is a beautiful, very much full coverage liquid foundation that wore beautifully during the day. Um, it is a natural looking finish. It isn't highly matte. It isn't highly glowy. It's kind of right there in the middle and covered everything right away just a wonderful full coverage foundation. Just does all the, you just put it on and it's done. So if you like full coverage, I think you'll like this. Hourglass makes a couple different foundations. Um, this is obviously their newer one and they they nailed it with this. Conversely, but also the brand nailed it, um, NARS Sheer Glow, a sheer, not sheer, a medium buildable foundation. It's called Sheer Glow. So I thought like this will certainly be sheer, right? No, it is not. In fact, I, the first time I put it on, I got on Insta Stories and was like, I think this is a full coverage foundation. Like, I, I was expecting a lot more um, of a natural finish, and I just didn't get that. Now that I've used it for a couple weeks, I'm like, maybe I just put too much on the first day. Not a problem. My skin looked great. My foundation looked good. Um, but I was just so surprised at the coverage it got, but I think I put too much on. This is not a new product. This has been around forever. I think I may have tried it like seven years ago and didn't love it, but I was using full coverage foundation every single day, matte finish. I wanted to look like a porcelain doll. Not so much anymore. So a buildable foundation is like right up my alley these days. Um, this is a, it's called Sheer Glow. You do have a natural look to this. You may glow if you have oily skin, like a bit too much. I have very dry skin, so this works for me. I feel like this looks like skin on my skin, which is really what I want. Another foundation that's similar to this is Giorgio Armani's Luminous Silk Foundation. This is a slightly better price point than Giorgio Armani's Luminous Silk, um, but both of those, I'd say I could put them right next to each other and say medium buildable foundations, both fantastic, both look like skin. I think this provides a little bit more coverage without as much effort than Giorgio Armani's Luminous Silk, but again, both are absolutely stunning. I have truly enjoyed doing my makeup with this foundation. I look forward to it, and I like makeup anyway, um, but I just absolutely love the way my skin looks with this foundation. Shifting over to some drugstore products, I have them all in my hand here, um, so I will just pick one on top and talk about it. This is the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. I saw this on Kristen Cooper's Instagram. Um, she talked about it, and I think she said it was like the number one selling bronzer on Amazon. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what she said. And then I saw it at Target and was like, well, I'll just pick it up here. This shade is light. It does have quite a strong coconut smell, which I don't mind. If you hate coconut, you'll hate this. If you don't mind coconut, you might like it. If you love coconut, you'll love it. Um, it is a matte bronzer. Let me try and not drop everything in my lap. It comes with a brush that you should just throw directly into the trash um, because it is like foam. It's like foam. What? Anyway, this is a nice matte bronzer. It looks good on light skin. It is warm. Don't use this as a contour. This is a bronzer. It's going to add warmth and glow to your skin. It blends in beautifully. You, it's very pigmented, so just a light dust on top of the product and put it on your skin and you'll be like, oh, I've, I've been on vacation obviously by my, by my skin, but in fact, and you'll smell like you've been on vacation, but in fact it's just a bronzer. A drugstore blush I've been loving is by Milani. Um, this is a brand that I've heard of for so long and I think I only knew it to be sold at Sally Beauty Supply. However, either I'm finally seeing it or it's newer to Ulta and Target. This is the Blossom Time Rose Powder Blush. This blush is beautiful. It is similar to the NARS blush, kind of that iconic NARS blush that everyone knows. Um, this is a family channel, so I'm going to just hold off on saying the name, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, this has a little bit of... It's not glitter, but it has like golden flecks in it that you can really see when you put it on the skin, but it is otherwise just this beautiful pink blush. Um, I do find that I have to build it up a little bit on my face or otherwise it'll get lost. 
Whereas the NARS blush that I use that has a similar look to this, like a little bit goes a long way. So you do get quite a bit of blush here and it's a lower price point than the NARS blush, but I feel like I have to use quite a bit of product to get it to really pop on my cheeks. Um, absolutely gorgeous. I will for sure get more colors of this blush and I've been using this daily for the past ever since I got it. <laughs> Pretty much this is the only blush I've been using, so um, I, I absolutely love this. Another, Mil two other Milani products while I'm talking about the brand is this highlighter. I had such a good experience with that blush, I thought I'll try the highlighter as well. This is the Afterglow Strobe Light Highlighter. This is shade number one. You will see this on your face. I'm comparing it to a Charlotte Tilbury highlighter and an Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. Both of those, the Charlotte Tilbury and the Hourglass, are high-end products. And the difference, the way you can really tell the difference with the highlighter is those highlighters don't look cheap on the skin. They, they look more natural when you put that on. When I put this on, I was like, I put the tiniest bit on. And it was like, whoo. And I just, I felt like, oh, I just cheapened my whole makeup look, if that makes sense. Um, so the color is almost exactly what that ambient lighting powder is from Hourglass. There's just so much more pigment here and it kind of it goes on much easier. So what I would do if you're using this is get a really big fluffy brush, swipe it through the product, and then tap like a, as much as you can off, then put it on your skin. Because you're going to get a ton of color payoff with this highlighter, but you don't want to do too much. And it's really hard to like get rid of highlighter if you've over done overkill on the highlighter, which I never want to do because I just feel like it looks too much for my day-to-day -day life. If you're into that kind of thing, do it. It's not for me. So beautiful color, great product because it works so well, but it almost works too well and can make it like a touch difficult to work with. So I know it's on my beauty favorites video. I love the price point and the color of it. You just have to know what you're doing when you're working with it. The last Milani product that I love and have been using pretty much non-stop since I got it, is the um, Soft and Sultry Eyeshadow Palette. I saw this at Ulta and was like, well that that looks like everything I need in a palette and I don't need more palettes. But it had such beautiful brown shades and I guess this would probably be qualified as black. Although, I don't know for sure. Yeah, probably. Um, you can make any eye look you want out of this and it was $20. That's all. Just $20. Right now I'm on a matte eyeshadow kick, so I've used a lot of the mattes, but the shimmery shades are gorgeous as well. Shimmery shades tend to be a little bit easier to blend than matte eyeshadow, so if you pick this palette up and you're kind of new to using eyeshadow or you're not comfortable with blending, start with those shimmery shades. I think you'll have an easier time blending them. This would be gorgeous, just like all over the lid, and then any of the, honestly, any of these in the crease are going to be absolutely beautiful. So if you're looking for just a basic brown, neutral, I want like something to wear to the office or something to wear in my running around during the day and then I also want something for date night and then I also want something for like drama. You have it all here. The last product I want to tell you about is a drugstore product. This is the NYX Hashtag No Filter Finishing Powder. I got this because um, it looked a little similar. Come on baby. It's love. Dro dropping products everywhere. It looks similar to the Becca. What is the name? Becca Blurring. Blurring. Let's go with Blurring. I'll type on the screen if I'm wrong. It looks similar to the Becca Blurring Powder that I have um, because it's this is a more neutral tone than the Becca Blurring Powder, um, but it has just the most barely there iridescence to it. Like you can tell it's just going to blur everything on your face. It's such a great price point and does what I was hoping it would do which is kind of put this filter you know that the Paris filter on insta stories that just makes your skin look perfect I don't use it because I feel like I don't know I don't use a lot of for real filters on insta stories I'll use like stupid ones for storytelling but anyway you know what I'm talking about the Paris filter on insta stories makes your skin look perfect this product does that in real life just like the Becca one does um, but this is yeah a little bit of a better price point a drugstore mascara that blew me away is the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Mascara. I got this. It, this was sent to me as well as a PR package um, gift. No requirements to talk about it. 
Uh, the brush is enormous and the product is so thick in like the best way possible. But I used this the other day and I shared this on stories as well. You should follow on stories if you want to see like sneak peeks of products I'm testing out. Um, it fanned my lashes out and just coated them with such a nice clean coat of mascara almost instantly. I was like blown away. I haven't had those results from mascara, especially a drugstore mascara, in a long, long time. So I'm wearing this on my lashes right now. It's beautiful. Um, this is black. They make it waterproof as well. And uh, it's good. The, my mascara that I've been using pretty regularly over the last couple years is Benefits Roller Lash, which I still love. But this is uh, close to it. Like if I was, if I had packed my makeup bag and was out of town for an important event and was like, oh, I forgot Roller Lash, but I saw this in there, I would think, oh, I'll be fine. I grabbed two masks at Target the other day because Pixie, the line sold at Target, um, rolled out a bunch of new skincare products this spring and these two masks uh, drew me in. I guess this isn't really a mask, but anyway, this is. This is the Collagen Plumping Mask, a volumizing leave-on mask. Here's the thing with these like live-on overnight masks or whatever. It's kind of just a night cream masquerading it, masquerading as a mask because it's like put it on and then leave it on. So like aren't masks usually something you take off, right? Um, anyway, so I put this on and then I took most of it off, but I left a little bit of it on and it was great. It's great. If you need a hydrating, um, collagen-filled plumping mask, this will do it for you. Did I see profound results of my skin looking plumped up? No. But I didn't really expect to. Um, I just thought, this is good for my skin, so I'll use it. The product I haven't yet used, but I did want to mention, is the Vitamin C Caviar Balm. This is a brightening, leave, also leave-on mask. Massage into the face. Allow the encapsulated vitamins to melt into the skin, let absorb. So like, it's cream. Do <laughs> you put it on and leave it on? Um, but I'm excited about this one. I've I've kind of taken a break from vitamin C products from months ago when I had this hormonal breakout that was like somehow became a really specific point in my life. But anyway, um, I sort of radically changed a lot of skincare in order to figure out what caused the breakout. I figured it out. It wasn't any of my skincare. It was these stupid protein bars I was eating. Um, but I have since been trying other products and I'm like, let me just hit pause on the vitamin C. I still love the Ulla Henriksen Truth Serum. And actually, like now's the time to kind of ramp it back up again. But um, I saw this vitamin C caviar balms, balm. So this is on my list of products to try soon. I don't know why I mentioned it because it doesn't fit in with my favorites video, but I think because I bought them together, they've been moving around my house together. So they're kind of one unit in my mind. Unfortunately, I have three fails to tell you about. The first is this Becca Anti-Fatigue Under Eye Primer. This just did nothing. Save your money. It's something you put on under your eyes, like right after you do your skincare, before you're going to do your makeup, if you're going to do your makeup, and it's supposed to kind of wake up your under eye area and act like a primer for concealer. It, it just, it was like nothingness, and I thought, I wish I would have spent my money on other things. I should have returned it, but um, I threw away the packaging and wanted to mention it on this video, so just, I don't know, just didn't blow me away. There are other under eye products that make a really big difference in how your under eyes look. That isn't one of them. I got this Flamingo Razor at Target. Basically was sucked in through the packaging. Here's what I'll say about it and why I'm putting it on my fails list. It does give like a really smooth, good shave. But it is not the like bar around it here doesn't help. Like I feel like I'm scraping it against my skin when I'm pulling it against my leg, even with using shaving cream. Um, so I don't know if like the blades are extra sharp or what, but it just didn't blow me away and I was hoping that it would, but I found myself, after I'd used it a few times, like, I'm just going to go back to my Venus razor with the shaving cream around it, you know? I don't have time to like rub shaving cream all over, so I like the Venus razor for that reason. Um, yeah, so if you if you two are like, ooh, that's beautiful. It is. It's pretty, and it looks pretty in the shower. But I, I'm, I would not repurchase, and it's just it's not that good to be worth buying an extra razor. The last product that I did not like is this fake bake, 60 minutes self tan liquid. First of all, it comes in a spray, 
which was weird. I didn't know that. I thought it was a foam, like most tanning products. It also came with a mitt and instructions and gloves and all this stuff. I just grabbed this bottle to tell you about it. Um, I love saint -Tropez tanning products, and I just got this to compare because I was like, maybe I'm missing something else. That's good. No. This is not very good. It smells so strong of fake tanner, and for like two days after, I'm like, I reek like fake tanner. I feel like a fraud. <laughs> the Saint Tropez ones somehow don't. In fact, I brought it up here. This one is my favorite. This is the um, Bronzing Water Mousse. It's um, natural glowing skin. This one is like, is it all natural? I don't want to lead you astray. No, the purest formula yet. So it is not all natural. It is their purest formula. And you can tell. It smells good. And it, it leaves the most, the most beautiful glow on the skin. This, no. I hated using this. You have to like spray. I just hate I just hated it. So if you're looking for a tanning product, just get this one. All right, those were my favorites. I have used a lot of other things, but that was like all I wanted to include in this video. Hopefully playing catch up here and we'll get back to doing these monthly. If you enjoyed this and you want to see older favorites videos, like from, I'm pretty sure I did one in December, but I have a handful that I did last year. You can um, search on my YouTube channel, just look for favorites videos, or you could also go to my blog, which is thesmallthingsblog.com, and search favorites or favorites video in the search bar there, and you'll be brought to all of those as well. But do comment and follow along on Instagram if you aren't already. It's fun hanging out with y'all over there, and I get to kind of show you products that I'm testing throughout the month. So you're sort of, you kind of have this inside scoop before you get to this point where you're watching the video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.